Welcome to Doctor's Corner. Today we're going to talk about the essential amino acid L-tryptophan. I think uh, everyone is aware that our body is produced of proteins, and proteins are really the building blocks of amino acids. And when you take an amino acid in its isolated form, it can give you the benefits of, of that particular strain of amino acid. When you take it in combination, it becomes a protein, like meat is full of amino acids. The product we're going to talk about is L-tryptophan. And our L-tryptophan is quite unique. And so what we're going to do is we're going to go into L-tryptophan, but there's been a lot of controversy with L-tryptophan. And I think I'd like to shed some light on this and to bring it into reality so you know how safe and effective this product really is. L-tryptophan was, was banned in Canada by prescription only until 2011. And at that time, we went and we applied for, for licensing as soon as it came available for a natural health product. And we were the first ones to be given a natural health number for, for, for L-tryptophan. This goes way back. Why the controversy? Now, Dr. Braverman brings it out quite clearly in his book, The Healing Nutrients Within. He goes into the controversy and goes into the details. We're not going to go into all the details of it, but uh, he does a very good job in setting the record straight. Let me just read you a few things that, that transpired so you can understand uh, really where we're coming from. In 1989, there was an outbreak for EMS. And in the EMS is a rare autoimmune disease that causes uh, fever, numbness, and rashes. It also affects muscles and arms and legs. Now, this, this EMS was caused by a single Japanese manufacturer of amino acids and he was trying to do is he was trying to produce a genetically modified version, a new way of producing amino acids, probably for added profit and maybe potency. But what happened was it got contaminated and the people that took that batch got very sick and some actually died. Now, this had absolutely no reflection of L-tryptophan but the way L-tryptophan was produced. Today, you would know the, these type of genetically modified as, you know, glyphosate in Roundup. You'll know how damaging that is. Can you imagine if you had something like that in a product that was genetically altering the product? And this is what happened with L-tryptophan. So L-tryptophan became banned in the United States and in Canada. And then there was no real sound reason for it. Had that happened to a pharmaceutical drug, that one isolated incident from one manufacturer, it would have been gone off as nothing. It would be, they would get a penalty, and that would be it. But in the natural health industry, it becomes, you know, the, the fire of the media. The media got a hold of this, and they started promoting it, and that was it. But we knew the, that there was no history, prior history with EMS, with tryptophan prior to this happening. Now, what, what tryptophan does is it does a lot of things for the body. And it, it's produced in, in the pineal gland. Now, the pineal gland, we know, is our third eye. And the third eye is the, what we, our perception and our understanding. This is where we produce our serotonin. It regulates our time clock and our body's sleep cycle. You know tryptophan when you have a turkey dinner and you get tired, because that's that tryptophan starting to act up and you get very relaxed and tired. It's also found in brown rice. Well, you won't have the same effect with L-tryptophan when you take it in a capsule form. When you take L-tryptophan in a capsule form, it crosses the blood-brain barrier. And when it crosses the blood-brain barrier, it's allowed to produce the serotonin and naturally relax you. 
It's also good for hyperactivity with children. And it's also good for, for those that uh, for having heart issues because when you, when you mix this with magnesium, it helps for cardiovascular disorders. The number one uh, cause of death is heart attacks. So you see how important this nutrient is. Now, the, the, the tryptophan alone, there's a lot of, there's some tryptophan, there's quite a few maybe on the market today, but they're not all the same. This is what we're going to talk about. The, the difference of L-tryptophan. Now there is, here's a chart. I think maybe if you see this chart, it'll give you a little understanding. And there's this chart shows that there's a chemical, chemical reaction by the cheaper versions that are coming out of China now. You can pick these up for $28 a kilo for a Chinese tryptophan, or they're fermented. You'll pay 10 times that amount for fermented. But the difference being is night and day. The chemical version, how this starts, is they'll take either duck feathers, horse hair, human hair, or get this, sewage sludge. Sewage sludge, really, because it has all the amino acid profiles. And they'll, they'll take this and put it in a vat. Mm -mm -mm. Can you imagine that? A, veg a vegan, vegetarian, you're, you're eating sewage sludge? You wouldn't like that, would you? Of course not, because you're not being told. And so what, what happens, and then they start putting chemicals in it to break it down. And what happens is it produces anywhere from three to five enzymes. And enzymes are what we use in our body to break down our proteins. Without enzymes, you don't break down your proteins. And so when you take this, it does not absorb to the cellular level. So it, when you bring it into your body, your body needs to further convert it. And it relies on enzymes, which are in short, short supply. So you're, you're already defeating yourself when you, when you take these inside. Now, it used to be that all the amino acids, when I started in the industry back in the, the early days, in the pioneer days, uh, we, they, everything was fermented. And fermented means free form. So free form means it passes through and gets absorbed directly to the cells. And the reason for that is it's produced by sugarcane. And sugarcane is in the vat with yeast, and it's allowed to proliferate and to grow. And what, what it does, it produces up to 30 enzymes. Now, the enzymes helps it to break down for cellular absorption to the cells. And so you're, when you're taking a fermented version of L-tryptophan, it gets absorbed. That is true freeform. I see some labels are saying that they're freeform, but it doesn't mention nothing about uh, fermentation, and it's under $10 a bottle. Well, you're not going to get fermented for that. The raw materials are, are costly. Secondly, tryptophan does not easily absorb across the blood-brain barrier unless there's adequate amount of B6 in the bloodstream. So if you don't have B6 in your bloodstream, it's not going to cross the blood-brain barrier. So this is what we, when we produce our products, we produce them for cellular delivery. So we put in a, a B5, B6, but in the form of pyridoxal 5-phosphate. That is the methylated form of B6. It is so safe and natural that even an infant can use it. So when you put 50 milligrams of P5P and you put that with uh, the tryptophan, now it's combined together and it crosses the blood-brain barrier for absorption. No more guesswork. And no more wondering, am I pulling something from my body that is going to need so I can break down this amino acid? Or is it going to cross the blood-brain barrier? Or am I taking animal residue? Or human? I don't know where it comes from. But it's sewage sludge. So the thing is, when, when you're taking amino acids, all, you must make sure that it's by fermentation, whether it be Life Choice or it be another brand. You owe it to yourself to take only the best. And remember the controversy.
when they say, oh, gee, tryptophan was a big cotton. No, it was one batch from one manufacturer in Japan, and that was genetically modified. When you try L-tryptophan, you will love it. Now, the one thing and why it's so important to buy the best of the best, it's Health Canada. When they licensed it, they limited the amount of L-tryptophan per capsule to 220 milligrams per day. One per day. Now, if you read Dr. Braverman's book, he will go into quite a big detail on how it can help for MS. I used to use it for MS, up to 1,500 milligrams a day. Give them B, uh, B12, methylcobalamin uh, injections, give them L-glycine, probably about 15 to 1,800 milligrams a day, and th their symptoms just dissipated. But you're not going to get it for 220. So you're going to have to do your own homework on this one. Uh, but we, we produce it legally in, in the country at 220 milligrams with 50 milligrams of P5P, and it's fermentated. So it's going to cross the blood-brain barrier. Enjoy. Enjoy the benefits. Know the truth. And the best of health.